Alrighty then, so we're going live. Theme seems like everything's okay, and we can start here soon on this live feed. Man, it's exciting. Another live video here today. I get to share some truth with our friends on the online forum. I just want to welcome you all here today. Today I'm going through an important topic. A topic that perplexes many unchurched and people unchurched people who don't go to church. Um, there are people today who look at churches and walk into churches and get familiar with church people and find out, well, hey, why are there so many unloving and unlovable people? Why are there all these social ills that often afflict our churches? Why? Well, this is not a reason for us to just cast off churches and say Christianity is a sham. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us how there are wheat and tares and there's good fish and bad fish, uh, which takes me to Matthew 13. So today, this is my thought and process. How do I and how do we, as people of the book, address these concerns as to why there are bad people in church? But don't forget, there's also good people. So why do both exist in the bounds of the Christian religion and in churches? It just seems to not make sense to many unchurched people. Well, today we're going to look at Matthew 13. And Matthew 13 is really significant. In Matthew 13, verses 47 on, where Jesus likens to the ingathering of souls as a fishing experience. Now, it's not fishing as like, you know, casting a rod and a, a line into the water and catching fish. It's actually like casting a net. And when you cast a net, it's non-discriminatory. It just picks up whatever. So Jesus says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of this world. The angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So here we just read that I just read for you was this whole ingathering net that catches every kind. It catches the bottom feeding carp. It captures the healthy, wonderful trout. It captures everything. The gospel net captures everything. And good and bad all come in to the boat, the church ship. Now, this net is non-discriminatory. It catches everything, right? So as we preach the gospel and as we share the gospel, we're going to catch every kind of fish, every kind of person. We're going to catch the carps. We're going to catch the trout. And God wishes that the carp become the trout, that the carp become like the majestic salmon, okay? God wants transformation in his church. So yeah, there's good and bad. Good and bad are receptive to the gospel and they come in. But the ultimate uh, thing that's supposed to happen is a transformation of who we are, our characters. That's what God is aiming for. So the church becomes like this hospital, this hospital for sin sick souls where people come in, though they have different character defects and problems, they come in and they receive some sort of spiritual treatment through the word of God, through fellowship with one another, they develop and grow as Christians. Some grow and develop healthy. Others decide to get more perhaps messed up or more um, become more resistant and maybe change in more uh, different and negative ways and end up becoming sort of like the Judas Iscariots. We remember Judas was among the 12 and he betrayed Christ. The reality is Jesus wants everyone to come to him and he wants all to come to him and to be changed but some refuse the transformation. So the dragnet represents this gospel that we preach and the efforts of the fishermen. So you and I today, if we're Christians, we're laboring for the Lord, we're these fishers, these fishers of men, and we're trying to gather in souls for the harvest and that ultimate sorting, which happens at the end of days. See, which brings me to another point. There are some people who think that they should uproot the tares themselves. They should uproot the weeds or they should sort the bad fish for themselves that they should put out of the church for themselves of themselves because they have the ultimate uh, they have the ultimate spiritual eyesight they have the ultimate sorting capability but the reality is none of us can read people's hearts none of us know exactly how people are thinking and really understand the motives behind why people do things some people do bad things because they have trauma in their life and they're living out uh, bad coping mechanisms of dealing with trauma and they do bad things because of it now, I want to remind all of us here that the Bible says that there are none good but God. All have sinned, as a matter of fact. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the reality is, when I look at the church, I try not to look at good and bad. You're good, you're bad. I try to look at it as we're all sinners in need of God's grace. We all need to be transformed and become saints in the heavenly kingdom. 
we all need this transformation. So whether good or bad, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as we're all a church family, that we're all sinners in need of God's grace. And Christ delights to make sinners into saints, to make them holy. And that's a process. Jesus was willing to be made known as a friend to publican and sinners. So when people who are unchurched look at the church and say, oh, there's all these bad people, bad Christians who lie, cheat, or steal, who, who, who do some bad things, and they're maybe unloving, and they have these social conflicts. Well, I don't want that. And they, they, that's what they say. They, they look at it, and they use that as an anchor to their excuses. They look at it as another excuse to put off church, to put off accepting Christ, because the Christian is unbecoming of Christ. And this is a really bad perspective, because the reality is, if we look to people, we're going to be disappointed because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have trauma to a certain extent, some small, some big. We all have these different personal problems that we've grown up with in life and that we all need to learn to overcome. Uh, so to just make the bad examples an anchor for an excuse to not join church or to point the finger at church people or the church and say, haha, look at you, I'm better than you because I'm not a Christian. This is just simply wrong. We cannot look at people, but we must look at the author and finisher of our faith. Look to Christ, not people. And that's what I would say to the unchurched people. It's or I would say to the unchurched people, hey, look, you know what? Don't look at me. Don't look at the other people in church who sometimes do bad things and sin. Look at Christ, who's the perfect one, who bled and died for you and me. And let's follow him because he was perfect. He did everything good and wonderful. I mean, if there's anyone that we should follow and anyone why we should join church, it's because of Jesus. We join church because of Jesus and because of the truths associated with what he spoke and the teachings he shared in the whole of scripture, which is spirit breathed and spirit, you know, authored. We follow Jesus. And when we follow Jesus, we come into church, whether they be good or bad. So yes, both companies exist in the church. But just because there's bad people, it doesn't mean that we leave church or it doesn't mean that we all of a sudden, you know, uh, leave church and become an accuser of the brethren or a condemner of church things. It just it just doesn't work that way. There's a sorting process that takes place after the net has been enclosed and all the fish brought in. So as the gospel is preached into all the world as a witness, that ingathering will be completed and then a sorting process will take place. Those people who have refused to change will go out, and those who have changed and love Jesus with their whole heart will stay in the church. There are whole different offshoot ministries and groups who have been basically leading people out of the Seventh-day Adventist church, saying that, well, come and basically teaching things that basically share this message of, well, I have a holier movement, come join my more holier movement because the Adventist church is doing X, Y, Z wrong. And the reality is the boat ship, the church ship, outside that church ship is a stormy tempest of sea and waves that will likely drown you. The world will drown you. And so there's individuals who say, well, come into my shipshod ship and my holier than thou movement because that, that ship's doing it wrong. It's a deception of the devil because Jesus taught that this gospel is preached out of the world and all the fish are gathered in to be sorted. And the wheat and tares grow up in the church until the last day. And then there's a sorting process. So the sorting does not happen before it happens after. During this time, we're in the ingathering. There's going to be a sorting later. Praise God. God is going to have a pure bride. There's going to be a sorting and it happens at the end. I hope and pray today that this makes sense to you. If you have any questions, drop some comments down below. Thank you for joining me. God bless you and keep you.